Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tarot on Purpose. Today's reading is to receive spirit messages for inner strength. This reading is inspired by this awesome kiwi jasper mohawk skull that I found in a local shop. And the story behind it is pretty cool. <laughs> I walked into the shop, you know, not on the best day, and one of my favorite bands was playing a really high energy song. And I walk through the shop, I come across this skull, and then I <laughs> turn it over, and on the bottom it says, Kiwi Jasper induces tranquility, peacefulness, and relaxation. And I just thought it was hilarious that some really high energy rock music was playing and then this is a mohawk skull which i was expecting it to be like rock star energy and it's like promotes peace and tranquility so i looked up kiwi jasper and it's actually a combination of amazonite and black tourmaline as i thought back i actually remembered another time when that band came on when i needed it and just uplifted me. So this is a reading to help you remember your inner strength and hopefully give you a boost of high energy, uplifting energy, and a vote of confidence that, that you got it. So we have four piles to choose from today. Pile one is the This Might Hurt Tarot with black tourmaline and amazonite. So this, these are actually Amazonite friendship bracelets, so sorry about the strings there, but um, that's the only Amazonite I had. And then this black tourmaline. And the This Might Hurt Tarot card coming out is the Nine of Cups. Pile two is Serpentine and Jade. With the Tattoo Tarot. Tattoo Tarot card is the star. Number three is Green Banded Onyx and Moss Agate. Woo! Come back here, guy. You gotta wait, you're pile three. And we have the Light Seekers Tarot. The Light Seekers Tarot card is the Eight of Cups. And pile four, we have Chrysopace with Bronzite. And the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot, the card Six of Pentacles. So for today's reading, I've chosen all my green and black and brownish white-ish colors to go with my mohawk skull there. And all the decks and cards are kind of along the same theme as the energy that this skull brings, to me at least. Hopefully can share that with you as well. This candle here is a divine protection candle and it actually has kiwi jasper crystals in there along with some lavender to help refresh your energy. So hopefully we'll be seeing some kiwi jasper crystals as the reading goes on and it's a divine protection candle so to help you in those times when you really need to draw on your inner strength. 
Also, at the end of this reading, there will be an extended collective reading to hear from spirit inner strength messages for anybody coming to this reading, no matter what pile they may have chosen. And I hope you see that after you watch your own pile. Take your time, reflect on the piles. When you're ready, I will see you at your reading. Hi, Pile 1. You've come to the reading with the This Might Hurt Tarot, the Black Tourmaline, which helps absorb energy that doesn't serve you. So it has a grounding energy. And Amazonite, which is a stone of compassion and helps increase understanding. And if you remember from the intro, these are the two primary elements that make up this mohawk, crystal skull, kiwi jasper. The This Might Hurt Tarot creator wanted to make a modern version of the Rider Waite Smith deck and create a language that helps us understand our inner and outer selves. So we're going to set this tarot aside for now. These first three cards are an overview of the energy and then we'll we have some supporting tarot cards that are specific to this reading the first card we have from the maori oracle and the maori are native to new zealand which that kiwi jasper is as well is kiwi so i think we're getting to the core of an issue here, trying to find out a basic principle that gives you inner strength because the black tourmaline and the amazonite make up the kiwi jasper. And then for this reading, the kiwi card has come out first. From the crystal oversoul, we have number 14, rhodochrosite. And from the symbol on Oracle, we have this card. It's a card of indicating disagreement with Aries, Libra, Mars, and Venus. Hmm. Maybe a division between our feminine and masculine. Maybe causing some issues of self-doubt or uncertainty. And this rhodochrosite card, actually, it says the scent associated with it is neruli, which is also in this candle. So that's a pretty cool um, link for this reading already because this card is tying to the New Zealand aspect of the kiwi jasper and this card is tying us to the candles so there's a lot of nice alignment going on here so far the guidebook for the rhodochrosite talks about letting go of the past it says it's time to arise from the past patterns that have inhibited confidence and joy for life are revealed and if you are ready to be released heart chakra healing is coming into play with that rhodochrosite card and also, if this is talking about a relationship instead of your divine feminine and divine masculine, we may be getting information about a relationship that has had some tough times or has ended because the rhodochrosite card is telling us that its past patterns have been inhibiting our confidence so if we maybe had a relationship that didn't go the way that we wanted it to doesn't have to be a love relationship could be any kind of partnership if we had something like that in our lives that didn't go the way we wanted it can be very shaking to us and it can really hurt our confidence and our desire to experience joy sometimes so um in the in the introduction i mentioned that the there was a band that i loved playing 
music from the band that I love playing. And I mentioned that when I found that skull in this local shop. And the other incident that I remember when that band played was I had a breakup and my friends took me out to a dance club and I was okay for a little while and then all of a sudden started thinking about the breakup and I was like, I just want to go home. And then that band, a really awesome high energy song by that band came on and I was like, no, we're staying. And we ended up dancing for a long time and it was really good and cathartic to be able to release that hurt that I was feeling just by dancing it away. And that was a really joyful time in my life, just remembering how much fun we had dancing. And it reminded me of all the good relationships that I still had in my life with the friends that took me out dancing to cheer me up. So hopefully that is something that Spirit will be talking to us today is how to remember the good things that we have in life so that we can continue to draw on our inner strength. The guidebook for the Kiwi card has the saying, sacrifice for the greater good, try to see the bigger picture. Noble and forward thinking beyond measure. So yes, let's remember to see the bigger picture. If we're feeling low, if we're feeling discouraged, if we remember the bigger picture and the greater good that can come from a situation that may help us put it in perspective, not to keep drawing on my own personal experiences, but I'm better off without that relationship that that ended and then my friends took me out dancing. It ended up being a better thing for me than staying in that relationship. You have inner strength that can help you get over any challenges, overcome past feelings of hurt so that you don't dwell on them, And remember that you have something to contribute to the greater good. I think that's a pretty good summary of the overall energy for this reading. But we're going to get some tarot next from the This Might Hurt Tarot. We're going to take five cards, please, Spirit, to fill in this middle section here. Thank you. First card coming out is the Knight of Swords. Look at that motorcycle riding forward, actually riding backwards, but riding with a wheel popped up. Air energy coming through with that. Whoa, are we taking these? Yep, okay. And then one more, please. Whoa, thank you. And on the back of the deck, we have the death card, number 13, change and transformation. That card that flipped is the Four of Pentacles. Grasping tightly to what it is that you have, holding on. And remember, this rotocrosite is encouraging us to get over past hurt, to move forward. This Kiwi, noble, forward thinking energy. So this right here being bookended, the Four of Pentacles, and then bookended with the Knight of Swords, holding on to what you do have, possibly riding really quickly backwards if you don't figure out a way to reframe the situation that you're in. It's interesting in this Knight of Swords card, the trees are blowing this way. And this motorcycle rider is going the other way in the opposite direction, like going against the wind. So potentially your inner strength is being able to take the the path that is less traveled. 
and maybe go against the way everyone else is going, doing something different, not following the crowd. That may be a big source of your inner strength is to remember your unique your uniqueness and that you don't have to follow the crowd. Because look at this rider has a hawk or an eagle going right along with her and that's a really good spirit guide to have. So spirits coming through and letting you know that they're with you and supporting you. We also have the King of Pentacles. Aries energy, fire energy with the Aries there. I'm saying Aries because of this ram, but it is earth energy with the King of Pentacles. Material stability and abundance. The guy in this card is just chill with a glass of wine. There's Taurus energy, it looks like, behind him. So that's the earth energy coming through as well. Abundance with the grapes. This is a note of positiv positivity coming from spirit to let you know it's going to be okay. You will be secure and stable. We also have the two of wands setting out on an, uh, a journey potentially. This lady in the card to me looks like she's taken her car out to a place that she wants to go hiking potentially and she's got her map and she's not just running off into the mountain. She's taking some time to look at the map and decide where she wants to go. Because this is the two of wands, I don't think that this is indicating that she's lost. I think that she's taking some time to reflect and decide what she wants to do. And she's using resources that are available to her to help her do that and move forward. So not only do you have the inner strength and ability to go against what other people may be doing to go your own way, you also have other resources that you can draw on and you're guided by spirit. The final tarot card that we have here is the Seven of Wands. Wow. This character is ready for battle with that bow and arrow. Sagittarius energy coming through with that bow and arrow. Fire energy with the wands. This is a fierce character, and it almost looks like she's saying... Don't make me pick up this bow and arrow to these, you know, whoever it may be that's pointing the wands at her. She's almost like, don't make me unleash this bow and arrow. You have an inner beast inside of you. <laughs> yeah, spirit is saying you are strong. You are capable and powerful. And whether or not you need to use all of your power and unleash all of your energy is, is up for you to decide. With the Knight of Swords here, with uh, the mental activity in this reading. So we have these three characters all looking, looking back. These two characters are looking forward or directly at us and no characters really are looking looking forward although this kiwi card here talks about the kiwi bird being very forward thinking so we're looking for a balance here especially um because we have these two characters right here divided um we're looking for a balance here between learning from the past living in the present and looking forward towards the future. It may seem simple, but considering a situation 
through past, present, and future may be a way for you to remember and draw on your inner strength. With the four pentacles shape and the shape of this rotocrosite card, I think it's spirit coming through saying, don't get your feet stuck just by holding on to what it is that you have. Because the rotocrosite is talking about releasing the past. So I think this is saying, remember lessons from the past, but don't dwell on it. Don't. Be so stubborn to um, plant your feet so firmly that you can't move forward. Because this King of Pentacles energy is waiting for you. And if you only hold on to these four, you're never going to make it to the King. Let's see what we have in these other Oracle cards. From the Angels and Ancestors, we have Mirror Garden. No. Mirror Guardian. Take time to reflect. Look at this guardian angel here. Looking out over the cosmos. Take time to reflect. And from the great mystics we have sacred stars. Few from the many. Lore from the beyond, born from stardust. Few from the many reminds me of this Knight of Swords. Oh, and the trees here are orange, and the orange background of this card ties these two together. Few from the many. This is asking you to remember your uniqueness. When you need to draw on your inner strength, think, think about what it is that makes you unique and what makes you able to go against what everyone else is doing. This card also says lore from the beyond and born from stardust. Sacred stars. So astrology may be something for you to draw on. If you don't know your birth, ch birth chart, spirit may be encouraging you to get a birth chart reading because it does say born from stardust. There may be some starseed energy coming through for you, especially how this connects with the cosmos here. And we have this bird coming down as a spirit guide here. So this is spirit reminding you that not only do you have resources on the earthly plane to draw from, but you have spiritual and cosmic energy energy to draw from as well the as above so below don't get stuck too much in one realm or the other remain flexible so you can move between the two and from the green witch oracle we have purification with the snapdragon car, uh, flower. Number 41. Oh, look, at it's a mirror number with this rhodochrosite card. We have a 14 and a 41 mirroring numbers here. So the rhodochrosite talked about past patterns being revealed that have been hampering or um, hurting your confidence and your ability to see joy in life. And this Snapdragon is coming through to help purify that. And from the rest of the reading, we can help ourselves by remembering what it is that makes us unique and thinking it through a past, present, future lens. Balancing divine feminine and divine masculine energies. So the giving and receiving, the intuition and the action, balancing those. We actually have air, earth, and fire here. I don't see any water energy coming through in terms of emotions or psychic capacity, psychic 
energies other than this is blue here and taking time to reflect is this almost is more of a mental mental car uh, mental activity mental because it falls right under the the knight of swords so i think this is more not talking about past emotions i think this is talking about past actions and thoughts and we had the the girl in this card planning her route so that's taking time to reflect and think things through and then move forward with whatever level of intensity you need for the situation if you can move forward without raising this bow go for it but if you need to raise this this bow and do some battle to get through a challenge then you're ready for it and spirit will be there with you from the wild women oracle we have number 11 artemis a hunter she of the wild with mercy look at that yeah if you can see on this card we have the hawk or eagle here and she has a bow and arrow as well artemis is the hunter her bow and arrow is, she's just carrying it at the moment, but she looks like she's pausing to ground herself. She may be hunting, but she's also pausing to ground herself, and this one foot forward, she's ready to move when she needs to, but she's not in a hurry. We've got a mama bear and a bear cub here and some antlers if you're looking for other signs of spirit animals. And with mercy, I think that's telling us, remember to show yourself mercy. I just mentioned something about past thoughts and past actions. So if there's something that you feel regretful about, have mercy on yourself and don't dwell on it. And then also show other people in your lives mercy. Just like this person has not yet raised this bow, patience and mercy are part of your inner strength. Your ability to control your responses rather than just reacting is very strong. So that's good because a lot of people don't have that. So keep that up. That is important for you. And we need more of that in the world. For people to show some restraint without just lashing out the moment they think they may be, I was going to say attacked, but I don't want to give the feeling that you just sit back and relax, especially if somebody is coming at you aggressively. You obviously want to deal with that situation to protect yourself. But if we feel attacked, not in a physical way, you have the strength to pause and reflect before responding and that's what we need more of in this world from the Gaia Oracle you actually yeah you, you got two so oh 44 ocean of eternal love healing creativity and fertility there's the emotions and the water energy and intuition from the moon and 44 is a powerful angel number for stability and security and finding your life path, healing, creativity, fertility. We had the healing come through from this rotocrosite, healing from the past. This may be um, spirit letting you know that emotions and thoughts about things that happened in the past may be coming up, but you are strong enough to reflect and pause on, to pause and reflect on those to process them in a healthy way. This mirror guardian card is reminding me a little bit of um, that saying about how people are behaving, or if they're like. I met, if they're making accusations or like verbally attacking you or trying to put you down, it's really a mirror of themselves. 
a mirror of themselves about how they're feeling and it has more to do with them than you. That's something very common that I'm hearing in readings that I watch from other readers is to remembering that everybody else is on their own journey and it doesn't always mean it's a judgment against you. Maybe they're at a place where they feel they need to be judgy and judging you because they don't have the inner strength to look at themselves the way you do. So I think this is asking us, to, especially with this mercy card here, this is asking us to remember that everybody is on their own journey in their own place and that some patience and restraint may be required to continue moving forward in a healthy balanced way with those that we interact with that takes a lot of strength to not get dragged down into other people's darkness but you have that strength that's indicated in this card here where she can ride the opposite direction if she wants to and she's showing restraint but she can fight if she wants to and then for the other card from the Gaia uh, sacred journey Life cycles, family, and transformation. Oh, and remember on the back of the deck here we had um, the death card, transformation. And I just was talking about everybody being on their own journey. Number 22, another master number for you. 22 and 44. You are strong. You have strong inner strength. I should find more creative ways to say that, but your inner core is strong. And if you've forgotten that, take time to reflect on, on that and remember how strong you are. Don't let other people drag you down. 22 is the master builder number, I believe. But that even if it's not, that's what's coming through to me. And then 44, stability. So we had... Uh, the Two of Wands setting out on a journey, and the King of Pentacles with material abundance and stability. So you have the inner strength and capacity to build what future you want and to be stable and secure through healing and creativity. Yeah, and we had a lot of wands energy here, a lot of fire colors as well. So that's the creativity coming through. Remember what you have that's unique to inspire yourself and, and ignite your creativity. Transformation coming through number 13 reduces to four. And we have the four of pentacles here. Yeah, transforming from a stuck energy to move forward. This skeleton oh and we have the skull rock star mohawk skull this skeleton has the same crown on it that the king of pentacles has so you are transforming by making sure that you're not holding on to things that don't serve you anymore black tourmaline you are transforming from the four of pentacles to the king of pentacles that is beautiful And this talked about releasing, the rotocrosite talked about releasing things from the past that don't serve us anymore. You have the strength to do that. You may not feel it at the moment, but you do have the strength and spirit wants you to know that. Oh, look, and then under the death card, we had the four of wands. And the queen of swords. Four of Wands is all about stability, celebration, abundance, fertility with these rabbits here. This is a happy little family. I don't know if you can yeah, see this rabbit, one ear up, one ear down. Earlier we had the connection between above and below come through. Yes, earthly resources and Resources from the spiritual and cosmic realms that you can draw on. And those rabbits there are a 
classic sign for fertility, which is also on this Ocean of Eternal Love number 44 card. I'm going to get two more cards here for some final guidance from Spirit. Final, um, any final messages that we need to hear. The first card I'm going to get is from the Wild Mystic. And this is, um, this has, uh, mostly animals. So maybe some spirit animal that can help us. We had the kiwi there. We had the hawk. We had the eagle. We had the rabbit, bear. Ram, bull. Okay. Yeah, whoa, that's really shaking. I'm going to bring that back. Some final guidance or highlight something we may not. Thank you. Holy moly. Okay. We have adap adaptation. This looks like an octopus. Yeah, that's an octopus. Adapting. You have the, abil the ability to transform and move forward. With the octopus having eight um, arms, eight is a number of abundance, and a lot of eight arms is a lot of resources to uh, draw on. So we talked earlier about remembering your uniqueness in order to ignite your creativity, you don't have just one thing. You have many. Multiple lines of work or income, for some reason, just came through, leading to that King of Pentacles. And there's that water emotions energy that we had um, kind of missing from the earlier part of the reading because the octopus lives in the ocean. One final card from the Awake. Inner Wisdom Oracle. Yeah, Spirit with that Adaptation card is saying you do have the ability to adapt. You don't have to stay in that Four of Pentacles energy. You can do it. You have the inner strength to do it. And that Spirit reminding you that you have that. One final card for us from this inner wisdom. Ooh. Well, okay. Um, you got two. We have masculine, feminine. All right, yep. Okay, that's spirit reminding us there. Balance our masculine and feminine sun and moon energy there and then we had this came out in reverse it says release and accept mm. okay so this came out in reverse and if it was in the upright position at least the way that like these are these would be my hands giving since it came out in the reverse position this is someone else's hands giving to me some stardust. We had stardust mentioned on this great mystic sacred stars card. So this is a spirit asking you to remember to be open to gifts that may be coming to you from either the earthly realm in terms of resources that can help you and assist you on your journey and also from your spirit guides. Be open. Release past energy that's keeping you stuck and accept what's coming in. This is preparing for you for some kind of transformation that's going to lead you to this King of Pentacles energy by being creative and spirits reminding you that they're going to help you with that. You don't have to go it alone. You are strong. This reading is about inner strength and this, this, um, where can I, okay. So this reading is about inner strength. 
And spirit is reminding you that you are unique. You are strong. You do have a strong basic core. You have a strong foundation inside of you. And spirit wants you to be confident that you have the strength to adapt when you need to and to transform from feeling stuck or even settling energy to become the king of pentacles and a star. You have the power to be the hunter, to go after what you want, but you also have the inner strength to pause and reflect and show restraint when necessary. And because we have the rock star mohawk skull, this is telling you, you have a strong inner beast. So it's almost like if you need to unleash that beast, do it. But make sure it's warranted. Pile one, this has been your reading. I hope that it has been helpful for you. I have really enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again soon. Hi, pile number two. You've come to the inner strength reading that features serpentine, which is a symbol of impassable strength, and jade, which helps us get over, oh, sorry, which helps us get over self-limiting beliefs. And the Tattoo Tarot, whose creator started making this deck after getting back into drawing, lost a project as an architect and was heartbroken, and then started going to a tattoo shop and getting back into drawing herself, and then made the, made the deck. So with the Serpentine and, and Jade both helping clear doubt, and self-limiting beliefs. I think that ties in well with this deck because had the artist doubted herself and her drawing abilities, she would have never created that deck, but she had the inner strength to do it. So we're going to start off the reading with these three oracle cards up top. I've um, chosen these three to help us get the energy of the reading. And then these Five oracle cards here are specific to your reading that you came to for pile two. The first card we have is from the Maori or oracle, and the Maori or are indigenous to New Zealand, just like that Kiwi Jasper. And we have Katuku. Looks like a crane. Air energy coming through with that bird. Yeah, clearing doubt, mental doubt. From the Crystal Oversoul, we have Green Tourmaline, number 16. That ties in nicely with the green theme of the reading. And from the Symbolon Oracle, we have this card here. Looks like a child maybe... Broke his toys and is running away, throwing a temper tantrum a little bit. This symbol on card has Cancer and Aries energy and the Moon and Mars. And it's called Defiance with the Destructive Child. So this is about controlling your inner rage. And I think what's key here is in the guidebook, it says it is only possible to be at peace with the little tyrant once you have lived out your childhood. Releasing feelings of defiance, anger, and annoyance. One day you will have to embrace the child. And remember the creator of this tattoo um, deck had mentioned that she hadn't drawn since she was a child, but she loved doing it. So this may be asking us to remember childhood hopes and dreams that we had to identify our inter 
our inner strength. Uh, and the guidebook for the green tourmaline card says, Green tourmaline helps us remember our soul mission by taking us to the heart of the dream that we nurture within. So that supports the idea that spirit may be wanting to talk to you about childhood dreams. It says, if we learn to listen and follow our soul's song, we'll, we will be guided ever deeper. So taking some time to pause and listen. This child obviously didn't. Acted out in anger. Probably wasn't listening to the mother. She doesn't look too happy with her hands on her hips there. And then the tower card, or sorry, the um, number 16 in the tarot deck is the tower card. So that talks about unexpected, abrupt change sometimes. I think Spirit wants to tell you that you'll find your inner strength by remembering what it is that you care about deep within in terms of what is important to you and oh a bunch of stuff just fell so <laughs> i was just talking about how um i thought spirit was tying this to the tower card in tarot and how identifying your inner strength has to do with what you care about at your core and what your soul mission is and what you want your soul mission to be. And what fell was the stack of guidebooks I have for these oracle cards. So it was like the tower crumbling. So spirit may be preparing you for some kind of change. It doesn't have to be negative. We'll see as the reading goes forward in terms of what kind of change we're being prepared for. It may be with these crystals talking about clearing out self-doubt. It may be just a change in which you no longer hold yourself back through self-doubt. Uh, and the guidebook for this Katuku card says, The favor of the gods have faith. And I mentioned this looked like a crane, but it um, says that it's a white heron. It says, Kutuku is a symbol of all that is blessed, pure, pure, graceful, and beautiful. The Kutuku is a sign that you are on the right path. That's really good. Yes, this is spirit coming in and saying that no matter if you have feelings of self-doubt, that maybe are making things uncertain and maybe making you feel frustrated and angry, you are on the right path. Things may be changing, but you have the inner strength to deal with it, and the spirit is on your side. That's a pretty clear message for setting the tone for the reading. We're going to find out more by getting five tarot cards from the tattoo tarot to fill in this gap here. So, five cards, please, spirit. The tattoo, tarot, oh, okay, got the first one coming out here. I'm going to have to rearrange all this because I did not leave enough space for really shuffling on camera. Goodness. Okay. I have four more cards, please, Spirit. Do we want to flip that? Not yet. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that's probably too many. Do we are it's four. Okay, we're taking them. You want that one flipped? So we have the three of cups energy coming through. 
and the star, the three of wands, and the eight of swords, mental blocks, self-doubt, and Give me one second just to put some crystals here. The Three of Cups. For modesty, the artist mentioned that this is kind of the draft version and there's another Three of Cups, but I leave both of them in there just because sometimes I think the outline versus the colored in one sometimes means something different. We have the star card coming front and center and the three of wands, which is personal power setting off on a journey with strength. This person is walking towards the sun or ready. Well, probably not because it looks like a lake. Uh, between her and the mountains and the sun. But there's boats. There is a path to get to the sun. There is resources available. The star card sometimes talks about hopes and dreams. And look at this. She's looking right at that card there that talked about the defiant child. So if you're not honoring your inner child, your childhood dreams right now, that may be the source of your frustration and anger. And Spirit is asking you to remember your childhood hopes and dreams as a source of inner strength. The Three of Cups, you know, this is three happy girls dancing, and this indicates friendship as well. So this is a joyful time. Remember joyful hopes and dreams from your childhood in order to find the path. Excuse me, in order to find the resources to your life path and your soul mission. We had come through with that green tourmaline card and spirit is guiding you and on your side. You may be feeling blocked right now by feelings and thoughts of self-doubt. Spirit wants you to think back to happier times. Of times when you did accomplish your goals and dreams. And we have judgment. Whoa, that's a powerful judgment card. Air and fire energy coming through here. So thoughts and actions. Emotions with the cup energy here. Air and fire in the judgment card. We have air and fire here with the swords and wands. I actually want to see what the creator of the deck says about this. Well, these books just keep falling. <laughs> Okay, if you don't have a solid foundation with these books keep falling, they're just going to keep falling over. So if you're not unleashing your inner child and recognizing your hopes and dreams, things are going to just keep crumbling and continuing to frustrate you. So spirit is really strongly coming through telling you to remember some childhood hopes and dreams that you may have had and letting you know that you are supported by spirit to pursue those. Judgment um, is number 20 in tarot. Okay, for, um, here's a little bigger look at the drawing from the, the author. And the two key things here, actually, I just saw another one. Three key things from here. Judgment comes to light when we can no longer waver in our decision making. All the information needed has been given to you. Look at these boats. The path across the lake has been identified. It's in these little boats. So you may not have recognized it because your vision has been clouded by feelings and thoughts of self-doubt. 
but important information has been given to you. If this is about dealing with something emotional, because we have the cups here, and the water, the lake here is water element coming through, the, the pathway to cross, and sometimes lakes may be stagnant emotional energy, the pathway to get out of stagnant energy to emotional joy has been shown to you. It has something to do with childhood hopes and dreams, but there has been some kind of energy, either actions of others or yourself, and thoughts, definitely your own thoughts that have been standing in your way from actually moving through that and achieving your hopes and dreams. And then the other thing that caught my attention from the guidebook says inner peace and personal growth can only occur once you've made the official decision on how to move forward. Spirit is asking you for some kind of commitment from you in terms of deciding to move forward. This path has been shown to you leading to the sun and life path if you are not going to take it, then Spirit is asking you to show some commitment to the path that you want to take. But Spirit is saying they have given you information and shown you the way to get to your hopes and dreams. Part of that is remembering childhood hopes and dreams. If you're having a hard time identifying something from your childhood that would be helpful for you, something with toys may be significant. I know in this card it shows broken toys and a frustrated child, but there may be a certain toy or game that you played that brought you a lot of joy. And instead of focusing on things that are broken right now that lead to anger and frustration, try to remember those things that brought hope, joy, and entertainment that you... Um, had fun with? What What did you do that was fun? What games did you play? What toys did you play with? What friends did you have that brought joy into your life? And if that kind of relationship is missing right now, what can you do to, to pursue those types of relationships that aren't uncertain, that don't bring more uncertainty and doubt into your life, that bring joy and creativity, and happiness, and dancing into your life. Okay, Spirit wants me to take one more tarot card. But which one? Just at the cut there? Yeah, okay. Six of Cups. Yeah, giving and receiving energy. Look at that. Look at that um, happiness and joy, giving and receiving type relationship. We just talked about what can you do to get back to those types of relationships that bring you joy. And then I was kind of called to find at the cut in the deck, and this was the card, the Six of Cups. <laughs> I love it when Spirit does that, just to, like, remind me that's that... We're on the right, oh yeah, we are on the right path. Spirit wants us to know that. That's the key card coming out here with the Kutuku, White Heron. This is what we're seeking. Six of Cups, Three of Cups energy, not judgment and frustration. Okay, let's get into the rest of these oracle. The first card we have is from the Healers of the Earth Oracle, and the topic is spiritual hygiene with meeting your twin. Like attracts like. Kindred spirit. Mirror. Number 62. The mirror to that would be 26, both reduced to 8. Giving and receiving. Meeting your twin. Like attracts like. If you're angry and frustrated, that's what you attract. You attract more people who are angry and frustrated. That uh, 
that saying misery lo loves company is coming to mind. It may take some work to get to the point where you can remember the joy and happiness that you once felt or to see the positive in a situation. But spirit is saying that you can do it and you have the strength to do it. Don't doubt yourself. From the salt and sea oracle, we have fish. Pay attention to your dreams. More emotion energy coming through with the um, water here. And fish reminds me of Pisces, which talks a lot about psychic emotional gifts and capabilities. Pay attention to your dreams. Spirit said that the information has already been given to you. Pay attention to your dreams. I take this in two ways. One we already talked about, childhood hopes and dreams. But also, maybe messages are coming to you in your dreams while you're sleeping. Maybe keeping a dream journal will help you identify the steps to take to get on the path or identify information that maybe Spirit has tried to get you to pay attention to that you haven't noticed yet. And I don't mean that to be like I'm shaking my finger at you. It just may mean that the situation you're in has you feeling trapped and is encouraging. This is the devil on your shoulder, encouraging feelings of self-doubt when that's not warranted. You are the powerful three of wands here. You can set out and accomplish those goals and dreams. From the Earth Wisdom Oracle, we have number 22, Relief. I needed that. I got a little bit worked up there, and the relief is coming through. Take a breath. Take a breath. She's got some kind of symbol where her third eye is and a red crystal where her heart chakra is. And 22 is a master builder number. So you have the capability to give yourself a break and find some relief from this emotional, mental self-doubt and blockages that maybe you are creating yourself or the situation you're in with other people is creating. But you have the ability to work through it. I want to check the guidebook for this number 22 because that seems really significant. Coming underneath the star card there. Okay, so I'm going to read from the guidebook for this. It says, you've been carrying a heavy load for too long. The overwhelming sense of responsibility has grown all out of proportion to the reality of the situation. Are you taking on more of a burden than you need to? That was my addition, but that's what I got from that. Spirit is saying relief is at hand. All you have to do is reach out and grasp it. In order to do that, you must release what you are clutching to. Let it go. You don't need to carry it anymore. Whatever emotional and mental heaviness you're carrying, you need to let that go so the hand can grasp the wands that will take you out of that and to the sun. The, card, the guidebook mentions that this herb is lemon balm and the crystal is a rhodonite. So those may be an herb, lemon balm, makes things easier to bear, eases an overwhelming sense of responsibility, and lightens a serious mood. Yeah, this kid is way too serious for being a kid. Yeah, we need to remember some joy. Act like a happy child, not a defiant child. And rhodonite, the crystal, aids in re restoration and recovery. So that may be a crystal for you to work with. So we have dreams, lemon balm, and rhodonite as potentially things that Spirit has been talking to you or trying to get you to pay attention to or maybe to use as resources to get out of this emotional stagnant feeling so that you can cross over to the sun energy. Happy hopes and dreams as a child.
not the things that frustrated you as a child or that are frustrating you now. These two figures also look kind of young. Young love. Young love may be relevant to you for some reason here. Childhood sweethearts. From the Universal Folk Oracle, we have number 31, Compassion, Nurture, Giving, Love, Life. And there's a rabbit on there and a little um, sparrow-looking bird up here. Compassion, Giving, Nurture, Love, Life. And... This symbol, the guidebook didn't say what it is, but it reminded me of the third eye, and then this purple comes out. Third eye, intuition, knowledge, knowing, wisdom. Intuition ties into the Pisces energy that I got from this fish card and the purple on here. Trust your intuition, I'm hearing. Emotions, you know, we also call them feelings, right? And when I hear feelings, um, I also think of physical feelings, like what, like our our sixth sense, kind of with the th the third eye. So the things that feel loving and nurturing are the things that you should pay attention to. And our sources of your inner strength. If things that make you feel angry and frustrated, remember like attracts like. Those are only going to bring more anger and frustration. When if you focus on the things that make you feel loved and make you feel nurtured, you'll attract more love and, and nurturing into your life. And that rabbit is a classic symbol of fertility and abundance. It may sound cliche, but spirit is asking you to, to think positive. I mean, it does make a big difference. It's that power of attraction kind of idea of like attracts like and think positive and you'll attract positive things. That's what's coming through in this reading. From the Spirit of Animals Oracle, we have Wolf Pathfinder. Release your past and start a new journey. You are a teacher and help others find their way. There will be challenges, but your soul is strong. Perseverance is your secret power. You have a love that endures. That is a great card to summarize this reading. What a good spirit animal for you with this wolf, the Pathfinder. Remember, we've been talking about the path and the information has been shown to you. Not only has it been shown to you, but you have the ability to teach others how to find their own path. Perseverance is your secret power. That is all about inner strength. You have the strength to keep going and persevere through challenges to get through those mental blocks. You have a love that endures. You're a loving person. Maybe you've not always been treated with love and kindness, but you are a love and kind, loving and kind person. Remember that. Your inner child wants that loving and kind nature of yours to come back out. It's easy to get caught up in the drama and the negativity of the world. It is. It's so easy to get caught up in that and to a point where you feel stuck and stagnant. Find something in your childhood that gave you joy and use that as a, as a trigger memory for happiness and joy. All right, I'm going to get two more cards for some final advice from Spirit, or um, I like to use final advice also as something that we may have missed. And in this case, because it said information has been given to you, let's hope that, that these next two cards help us identify that so we're going to start with the inner wisdom awake inner wisdom cards i'm i'm also thinking when this wolf came out you know the wolf is a predator of a rabbit so without thinking of it in natural selection or um food chain framework 
the wolf, the pathfinder, seeks fertility and abundance. Perseverance is your secret power to finding and achieving the giving, loving, nurturing, compassionate life that you're seeking. Perseverance. Spirit is on your side. You're on the right path. We've had that from the beginning. Pay attention to your dreams. What else, Spirit? What do we need to know before we end this reading from the awake? Whoa, okay. There we go. Light heart came out. Oh, there's a rabbit. Light heart. There's a fairy sitting on top of what looks like an orange slice feeding a strawberry to a rabbit under the cover of a mushroom. And this came out in reverse. So, lightheartedness is not this angry child. You're feeling of being lighthearted and joy is blocked because it came out in reverse. Spirit is saying you need to seek things that bring joy to your life, which seems like a given, right? I don't think some of us seek out the negative. I don't think most of us seek out the negative, but in this case, Spirit is saying... Maybe you're being too serious about, yeah, we had that earlier in the reading. You're being too serious. You're taking this situation too serious. Bring some lightheartedness into your life. Remember the simple things in life that bring you joy. Simple toys that brought you joy as a child. And then the final oracle we're going to get is the Wild Mystic Oracle. This has keywords and spirit animals as well. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Pisces. Determination. Perseverance. Pisces energy. Spirit is on your side, and they showed it by making that card jump out. I hope you saw that on the camera. That is awesome. Let me actually read from the guidebook from this because it came out so prominently. I think there might be something in the guidebook to help us. Okay, from the guidebook, it is saying that these fish are salmon. It talks about the salmon persevering. You remember the salmon are the ones that swim upstream to spawn. So it actually says perseverance which ties us back to this wolf spirit here. Perseverance is your secret power. This is confirmation from spirit that you have the power to persevere. Your determination will get you through. It says, this card is a symbol of hard-won achievement and willpower in the face of great odds. That's your inner strength. With anything that's causing the self-doubt and stagnant feelings, you have... The willpower, determination, and perseverance to get through it. You do have that. If you don't feel it, you do. It says, The salmon's natural ability to find their way home may imbue this card with a feeling of return, navigation, and finding one's way back to a place of acceptance. Yes, so that ties back into remembering things that used to bring you joy and happiness to find out how to bring that back into your life. That's a pretty clear message, pile number two. I hope you've enjoyed the reading. I definitely have, especially how that last determination card just jumped out. Kind of like how that skull kind of jumped out at me in the... um 
in the store and then I turn it over and the sticker says brings inner peace and tranquility. Remember to think back about things that may have been signs that you may have missed because the information to move forward has been given to you. Perseverance is your secret power and you may be more psychic than you're allowing yourself to believe right now. Pile 2, I'm going to end your reading here. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you again in a future reading. Thank you for spending time with me. Hi, pile number three. You've come to this inner strength reading that is inspired by the green banded onyx stone, which helps us with strength, willpower, and determination. And the green moss stone, which is a stabilizing stone that also helps us connect the above to the below. And the light seer's tarot, in the introduction I said light seeker, so we may be seeking some light. The creator of this deck wanted to illuminate the light and shadow aspects of our nature and help us learn the lessons from each side that we should be learning. So we're going to set the tarot aside for now. And I have three oracle cards up top that I'm using in each reading from each, the, using the deck in each reading, different cards from, from the deck, and then five oracle cards that are specific to your reading. So the first card that we, I'm actually being called first to take the tarot first for you for some reason. It just wouldn't let me take my hand off of it. So let's go ahead and look at your tarot first. We have the hanged man. Number 12. Seeing new perspectives or being at a moment of pause. And we have the Death and Rebirth card, number 13. New Perspectives. And these three came out. Want me to... Okay. Number three, the Empress, Abundance, Feminine Power, Seven of Wands, Overcoming Adversity. She's got a bubble around her, protecting her. And Six of Cups, giving and receiving energy, um, nostalgia, the path of life. This little boy and his puppy has grown into a man and his, his dog. So why did we want to do the tarot first? Spirit. I've I've done pile one and two so far, and this is the first time I'm being drawn to do the tarot first, and 
I'm kind of being called to do this in a different order. So I'm going to take a minute here and figure out why this is different. Back of the deck is the Hierophant, number five. Spirit is preparing you to see new perspectives leading you through a transformation that will lead to abundance and feeling protected along your life path. That's the overall theme for this reading. That's beautiful. Preparing you for some kind of change and transformation, but it's positive. The Hierophant is speaking to me about those stable, core knowledge, time-tested aspects of knowledge, tried and true methods for taking a pathway to light and feeling protected. These two figures are seated in the same way, so they're, I'm being drawn to connect them to each other. Let's just go ahead and take this. Wants to go there. Spirit wants to talk to you about the inner strength that you have to lead you on your path of light and feeling protected and calm. That's good. This starburst here is here. Whatever transformation you're going through is a rebirth getting you to the top of this staircase that's leading to the the light ascending to the light a higher vibration if you've been having difficulty dealing with change right now spirit's asking you to see from a different perspective that this is actually a positive thing this light is here shining for her to see and here and here solar plexus and here this is on the empress card this is water washing in and fish swimming that way so maybe salmon swimming upstream but the water is washing in so this Transformation is bringing in a wave of abundance for you. That's the change in perspective that Spirit wants you to take right now. Instead of maybe being nostalgic for the past, which sometimes the Six of Cups can talk about, look at it from a perspective of a wave of abundance coming in so that you feel like you're vibrating higher and living a lighter, joyful life and that you're protected and calm. Okay, let's get into the oracle. This is the Maori oracle, which the Maori are indigenous to New Zealand, which the Kiwi Jasper is as well. So we have Totara, a fruitful berry there, ties to abundance with the Empress. From the crystal oversoul, we have the emerald. That's rich and abundant, number 30. I thought I saw that kind of rayed flower symbol somewhere. I mean, it may be this, this light that's zigzagged all through your reading so far through the tarot. And then from the symbol on Oracle, we have, oh, excuse me, card. This looks like hard work, carrying a heavy rock up the mountain, seeking a lighter path than what you've been carrying right now. If you've looked at the pathway in front of you and you've seen this, hard work kind of slogging uphill carrying a heavy burden spirit is letting you know that you have the inner strength 
that it won't be that hard to follow that path. Once you get started, it's not going to be that hard. He has not started up that pathway yet, but he looks really happy and joyful, anticipating the path rather than dreading the path. Anticipating with joy things that are to come in the future rather than dreading them, dreading the things that may be changing. That's a pretty clear theme for this reading, Pile 3. In the guidebook for this symbol on card, it says that it's Leo and Capricorn, Sun and Saturn energy. And it, it says, be prepared for a long, challenging process ahead. There may be a few setbacks, but you are strong enough to handle the responsibility. The view of the summit has given you clear perspective. Think about the, the goal that you're trying to achieve and, and what all the hard work and dedication is leading to. But remember, intuitively, I heard from the tarot that the path is not going to be as hard as you think you, as hard as you think it's going to be. So that's why Spirit wanted me to take the, the tarot first. It didn't want us focusing on the burden that we have to carry. It wanted us fo keeping the end goal in mind, keeping the higher perspective in mind. That's why it wanted me to do the tarot first. You may face some challenges and setbacks, but you're strong enough to get through it. And it's the goal is worth it. Yeah, and at the back of the deck with the Light Seer's Tarot, we had the Nine of Wands, which is overcoming adversity. And look at her, how happy she is. Her wand is a glowing orb. And I just saw the attitude in her face like, yeah, that's right. That's right. I did it. That's a good attitude for you. Strong, capable, determined, and confident. The guidebook for this number 30 emerald card says all real healing starts with the willingness to change. This came out in the tarot where Spirit's asking you to look at some change that you're going through from a different perspective, and Emerald is backing you up on that. It says, Emerald asks us to look within and ask the penetrating questions as to the nature of our reality or how we perceive our situation. Rather than prematurely blaming or judging another, First, seek healing around our own attitude. Hmm. I would also add to that, don't jump to conclusions here. Take the time it's going to take to see things from a, a brighter perspective. That, that doesn't always happen overnight. And this is telling you it's going to take some time because it may feel burdensome. It may feel challenging. You're going to need to take the time to not jump to conclusions and to see the reality of this transformation that it's actually leading you in a positive direction. It, the, emerald, the guidebook for the emerald also says, blockages that we allow to stand in the way of achieving our dreams are reflected back to us. So this is asking us, where it said go within, it's asking us to get out of our own way, basically. Are there attitudes or thoughts or feelings that you have that are creating blockages to this abundance and feeling protected and that there's a brighter future? Because, you know, what goes around comes around. So if you're feeling, um, if you're only focusing on the burdens and the challenges that you have, that's what you're going to attract into your life is more burdens and more challenges. That's kind of a theme that's been coming through recently. So Spirit is really asking us to focus on the positive. And I know that sounds cliche, but it actually makes a big difference when we, when we learn how to do that. And in this case, the 
way for you to draw on your inner strength and focus on the positive is keeping your, your goals and dreams in mind. What are you working towards? What's the end goal? Keep that in mind. Keep looking for the to the summit. Don't look at all these steps that you have to take. Don't focus on them. I mean, you can't ignore them, right? You, you got to take the steps. But focus on the summit. Focus on the goal. Focus on the higher vibration, the light. The saying for the Totara card in the Maori Oracle is the right thing for the right purpose. Yeah, that's the right thing for the right purpose. That's why we went about this in a different order than the other piles. The right thing for the right purpose. That guides you through these challenges and burdens and helps you see things from the perspective that will lead to abundance. The right thing for the right purpose. Good intentions. Positive intentions. Okay, let's move on to the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And we have every journey starts with a single step, number 12. Every journey starts with a single step. That's beautiful. She's getting ready to go on a journey. She's holding her suitcase. It's bursting with, uh, sorry. She's holding her suitcase and is, is bursting open with butterflies, the classic symbol of transformation. Yet, Spirit is preparing you for some kind of transformation and change for starting a new journey. I'm just going to place some crystals here for some modesty. You got to take that first step. It may be scary. It may be burdensome. It may be challenging. You got to take that first step. Twelve reduces to three, and three is the Empress. You are on your journey to becoming the empress, to becoming powerful and abundant, but it starts with a single step. From the Priestess of Light Oracle, we have Earth Magic number 26, Fearlessness and Removing Obstacles. Yeah, look at her. She's like, nope. Those challenges are not going to stop me. Earth magic, fearless, removing obstacles. Number 26 reduces to 8. 8 is abundance. Ubi had the hanged man here, which reduces to 3 as well, and 12 and 12. Hmm, you may be seeing 12, 12 as a sign about this journey. And it sounds like you're going to need some encouragement. Spirit wants to keep encouraging you because you are going to face cha challenges and setbacks. But Spirit, uh, Spirit doesn't want you losing hope. 12-12 is significant here. And 12-12 is, is significant for you. So I'm going to look at the 12-12 from this Angel Numbers Kyle Gray book. 1212, 12, you have the power to bring healing and light to the world. Notice how your intentions and actions are already doing just that. Beautiful. We talked about positive intentions. And this is a reading for about inner strength. So this, when you see 1212, 12, Spirit is reminding you, you have the power to bring healing and light. Your intentions and actions are already doing that as long as they're positive. Right? If they're negative, that's what you're going to bring into your life. You have the power to bring healing and light. That when you see 1212, that's what that means. Move forward without fear. Horses may be good spirit animal for you. They're, this spirit horse is, is carrying you forward and helping remove obstacles. You're not alone in this. From the mystical shaman... Oracle, we have the Andean Cross, number two. Mm. 
the circle here is the bubble of protection is what it's drawing me to and and the target the goal from the the guidebook for this oracle this is really neat it says the andean cross announces the start of a great journey every journey starts with a single step remember from this sacred uh, rebel card the hole in the center is a gateway to interdimensional travel the proverbial eye of the needle we can all go through to experience higher states of awareness and wisdom and to break free of linear time the cross depicts the four directions and the upper and lower worlds so that ties back to the moss agate crystal here about how it helps us connect the above to the below so that may be a, a good crystal for you to work with and it's also stabilizing which i think is important for you so we have a spirit coming through mentioning moss agate and 1212 as symbols for you to remember that you're on the right journey and you're moving forward to more positive things to a more positive abundant future journeying and transformation your transformation may not only be in the earthly realm this is bringing spirit in we've got earth magic here and then this andean cross talking about this keyhole to interdimensional travel so this is connecting the spirit world with the earth world you may be being prepared through some kind of transformation to go on those kind of shamanic or even mediumship type journeys. And that can really sound scary and challenging if you're not familiar with that kind of thing or never experienced it before. It can seem scary. I, I see that for sure. Okay, from the Raven's Wand Oracle, we have wild at heart she is flying on a broom playing a violin flying as high as the birds <laughs> i love that card that is really cool and she's made like a headdress out of feathers a crown out of feathers i uh she's got a little toe ring and some tattoos i am just um i don't know if this is correct to say or not but i'm hearing let your freak flag fly <laughs> i mean it for some reason that's what came through when i hear this card she's not in a negative way anyway i mean she, she's awesome right but i'm hearing let your freak flag fly wild at heart set yourself free allow yourself to take the steps on this journey Music may be helpful for you. I have to see what this card says in the guidebook. Uh, this is interesting. I just mentioned that you may be being prepared for some kind of um, shamanic journeying, transformation, or mediumship abilities. And this card says that eagles have been pushed farther and farther into remote and rocky places and witches have been forced to find ever more secluded locations for the covens for much the same reasons yeah so shaman journeying and mediumship are not the mainstream right they're not the norm for most people and that's why it can seem scary and challenging and like a burden when you first experience it spirit is preparing you for that because it because of that and encouraging you to see things from a higher perspective leading to a higher vibration of healing remember 1212 you have the power to heal and bring light into the world spirit is preparing you for that you have the inner strength for that this may be an inner gift and inner talent that you haven't discovered yet and spirit is preparing you to discover some kind of inner talent that brings healing and light to the world and it may be something that's not accepted by the mainstream and that's okay 
let your freak flag fly. I mean, I, I hope that's not negative to anybody, but that's what I keep hearing. So I mean that only in a positive, positive, ma light manner, tone. I mean only positive things by that. Positive intentions. I'm not trying to hurt any feelings or bring any negativity to anybody with that. This is reinforcing the positive intentions just because I had those feelings to like I needed to really stress that I don't mean anything negative by that. This is re uh, connecting us to that idea of moving forward with positive intention. Okay, from that Ancestor Spirit Oracle here, we actually got two. The first one says, interact and relate, community, family, traditions. That's a positive loving card. Interact and relate. Yeah, you're not going to be alone in this. Remember when this Hierophant card first came out, I said this is telling us about some tried and true classic forms of wisdom and knowledge and things that work. This is tradition, community, family, things that have worked for ages, ancient things. That's what shamanism is. That's what mediumship is. Those are not brand new things to the world. Those are ancient, tried and true things, traditions that lead to light and healing. And then we have explore your creative side, visualize, paint, and record. Yes, okay, so that's going to go here. By every journey starts with a single step. Spirit is telling you if you're having issues dealing with change or seeing things from a new perspective or figuring out what that single step is, it can be found by exploring your creative side. Visualize, so meditation or visualization Vision board kind of exercises may be helpful for you. Painting. Do you have an artistic side or music came through with this violin? Get back to some kind of artistic side or let, let unleash that creative. It, unleash your inner artist. Let your freak flag fly. If that art isn't something that is accepted by the mainstream, don't worry about it. You'll find an audience for it and record so journaling remember how much we're learning now by finding these ancient cave paintings so um, when we journal we can go back to learning about ourselves like when we journal we're recording how we felt at that period in time but then when we go back and read it's reminding us of how we used to feel and how far we've come or if it's reminding us of things that were helpful in the past that we may have forgotten. Just like the Hierophant is tried and true tools and customs and traditions that are helpful for us. Journaling may be helpful for that so that you have something to look back on when you need it. All right, Pile 3, I'm going to get two more cards for me for you. Going to get two more cards for you, some final guidance from Spirit or things that we may have missed earlier in the reading. This is the Wild Mystic Oracle. Usually has something like um, spirit animals that come through. We've had bull, horse, eagle, dog, all powerful spirit animals. Horse is strength. Bull is determination. Dog is loyalty. Eagle is higher perspective. 1212, you have the power to bring light and healing into the world. Positive intentions. The emerald up there, strong and abundant. That came out pretty clearly. We have sacred. 
sick and it's a starfish so something sacred yeah you're you're being prepared for a a transformation leading to something deeper and more spiritual and something that tradition and ancient people may have found sacred even if it's not sacred to the mainstream And then the final card is from the Awake Inner Wisdom cards. Nope. All right. This card here, Nature Gems. It did come out kind of reversed. That goes with this Earth Magic card here. We talked about Moss Agate being a crystal and 1212 being a sign. I think this is telling, um, Spirit is telling you that signs in nature may be something to help you prepare and continue on this journey. Something with nature, something outside. I'm going to go back and see what it says in this guidebook for the earth magic. Yep, that's why it wanted me to. It says the horse, the horse, a creature of power, has long represented freedom. This card signals that the time is right for you to free yourself of the obstacles blocking your movement forward. You may have been hesitant or even afraid to face these obstacles before, but there is a greater courage growing within you now. Take a look at your life to determine what needs to be done. It is time to fearlessly choose to prioritize and honor yourself. Here's an affirmation for you going on this journey it says i have the power to remove any inner or outer blocks i am fearless in my choice to honor myself and my life yep that is the attitude coming from this figure in the nine of wands who can't overcame this adversity and this is the person not afraid to follow their heart wild at heart and go on their own journey, even if it is not mainstream or accepted by the majority. You have the inner strength to do that. I also was called to check the guidebook for this Awake Inner Wisdom cards, and I couldn't initially find the keyword, so I looked in the table of contents, and Nature Gems is on page 12. 12 is a significant number to you, and remember the higher goal 12 reduces to 3. 3, the Empress. Abundance, fertility, power, strength, light, and healing. 12, 12 is a symbol for you. And from the guidebook for this Nature Gems card, it says, May the essences of all beings show you the way to float on the breathe. Grow and flow in oneness. Find inspiration in nature's cycles and the intricacies of design. Even the seemingly simple leaf floating by has a story to tell and is divinely orchestrated in its form and placement. So drift on the wind and sow seeds of compassion and wisdom. That's beautiful, Pile 3. Yeah, pile three. I'm gonna leave your reading here. It's really beautiful. You are being prepared. Per you are being prepared for a pretty significant transformation, and it's gonna be positive. Move forward without fear. I'm cheering for you, pile three. You got cheerleaders from me. You got cheerleaders from spirit. Remember, twelve, twelve. Unleash your creative side. 
moss agate, nature gems. Pile 3, I hope you've enjoyed the reading. Thank you for spending time with me. And I hope to see you again in a future reading. Best of luck to you on this journey. It seems very significant, but very much needed in the world today. Best of luck to you, Pile 3. Hi, Pile 4. You've come to this inner strength reading with the intuitive night goddess, Tarot. The creator of this deck set the intention for this deck to help us connect to energy of potential, depth, and magic within ourselves. And it invites you to be strong as well as soft, inquisitive, resilient, and transcendent. And you've come to the reading with the crystal pace, which helps us connect to our inner child and joy. And bronzite, which helps us get over any feelings of insecurity and self-doubt. We're going to set this tarot aside for now and start with these three oracle cards here to get an overall energy. And then I have five oracle cards here that are specific to this reading. From the Maori Oracle, and the Maori are indigenous to New Zealand, which the Kiwi Jasper is as well, we have Purua. That is very hard to pronounce. It looks like some kind of tool of some sort. And then from the Crystal Oversoul, we have number 20, Kunzite. And it was in the reverse position. I'm going to get more information on these cards as well, but I want to see all three first. And from the symbol and oracle, we have this card here. It looks like the first word that, that came to mind was reverence. That is quite a bounty. This is fruitful harvest here. Being thankful for what you have in your life. And then we have the caduceus, which is, you know, medical symbol, but also some sacred knowledge coming through here. Hopefully we'll be finding some tools that will help us regain inner strength that may be blocked right now with that kunzite being in reverse. In the guidebook for this ritual musical instrument called Epurerehua, the main statement is the call. Take care to communicate your needs clearly. The Maori are said to use this, um, swing it overhead and it makes a sound and it speaks to the life principle. Calling to it or sending from it only what is needed. So Spirit is asking us to think about what our needs are and communicate them clearly. No more or no less than what is needed at the moment. And this is a bountiful har harvest too. You can bet she seems like a pure reverent, honest person that's probably going to share this bounty with others. The guidebook for this deck says it's bringing in Virgo and Mercury energy with keywords accepting reality, rationality, and spiritual balance. And it says, the result of your learning process is not the gold at the end of the rainbow, but quiet order and knowledge through which your soul finds composure and resumes its rightful place so connecting the life principle your soul mission your soul's rightful place in the world not doing more than is needed and not doing less than what's needed but finding that happy medium finding your soul purpose 
Yeah, so this Kunzai, the guidebook for this Kunzai number 20 card says, Sometimes in life we need action and determination to make things happen, and sometimes we need to let go and let the universe handle the details. So since it's in reverse right now, I think there might be some kind of imbalance. And this is finding the inner strength to restore balance so that your soul is in its rightful place. Connecting back to the life principle that goes through everything. We are all connected the, the way the universe is connected. Restoring balance so that we're, we're not giving or taking more than we should be and we're not doing more or less than we should be doing. Our rightful place, balance, and how we fit into the universe and what our soul mission is. That's what Spirit wants to talk to you about today and help you find the inner strength for, for getting back on track, I think. Okay, we're going to get into the tarot now. We're going to take five tarot cards from the Intuitive Night Goddess tarot. I think the intention that the creator of this deck set which I described earlier is going to go in well with that initial theme that we had come through with those three Oracle cards. We have five Oracle cards or five Arrow cards, excuse me, please, spirit. That one came off. We have the Nine of Swords. Thoughts, overwhelming thoughts is what's first coming through. Okay, that would be overthinking things. Four more cards, please, Spirit. Thank you. We got the witch, number one, which I think in traditional tarot is the magician. Yep, there's only one there. Having the power and the resources to accomplish something. Whoa, okay, that's too many. Oh, we had a bunch of them. Okay, you just want this one? All right, we had the Four of Wands. Celebration, joy, achievement. And... Do you want me to take... Any of these? No. Keep shuffling. It says, okay, we want two more cards, please. So we have the Nine of Swords. I first got overthinking and then followed by the Witch, which is resources and power to accomplish things, and then followed by the Four of Wands. So that's a little nod of confidence to you from Spirit that you can restore balance. Ooh, thank you. And we have Reclamation, number 15. Number 15 in traditional tarot is the devil. And in this case, the creator has called it Reclamation. Overcoming and reclaiming. Overcoming obstacles, burdens weaknesses and reclaiming your rightful place in the universe that's yes that's what it wants me to hear from that this reading is about you reclaiming your rightful place 
Reclaiming your inner strength, reclaiming your power. And then the final card we had come out was five, the five of wands. Yes, this is sometimes about petty conflict, challenges. Those are light wands. They're not, you know, the traditional stick that you see. And she looks like she's in some kind of superhero costume. Thor coming through, maybe, with those lightning bolts. I know Thor's thunder, but Norse, Norse mythology may be significant for you. And the back of the deck, Queen of Cups. Emotional stability, psychic power, awareness, intuition. She wants to come out. Queen of Cups. And then we had the Six of Cups becoming the new back of the... And Spirit of Cups. <laughs> okay. Six of Cups. Uh, nostalgia. Happiness. Giving... Yeah, balance between giving and receiving. Look at the progression you have in your tarot cards here. This is beautiful. So... We start out here with the Nine of Swords and these overwhelming thoughts, overthinking. And we've recognized reclaiming our power. We've recognized that we have the power and the resources to overcome something that is overwhelming us. And turn it into something that is joyful and that we can celebrate. And remember this crystal pace was connecting us to joy and our inner child. And then this hand, this is you coming up and grabbing these wands, joyful celebration wands, reclaiming your power, reclaiming your power and restoring balance. This Queen of Cups card also talks about boundaries. Um, and how the Queen of Cups is more of a guide rather than doing everything for other people. They're more of a guide for people, a teacher, a guide. So that speaks to the balance of doing only the right amount of something, no more, no less. All of these figures, the Queen of Cups, the Reclamation and the Five of Wands characters are looking forward to the future. And we have the Six of Cups, which speaks about emotional balance and a good flow of giving and receiving. Sometimes speaks of childhood nostalgia as well. Yeah, so this, this reading is about reclaiming your power, restoring balance, and knowing that you have the resources and you are capable of doing that. That's your inner strength there coming through. I can see here that I've got two of these oracle decks, or um, excuse me, two cards from this oracle deck actually came through. And it's going to go here. I know that. And these characters are looking directly at it, but I'm not going to peek at it. I listened to um, a reading, White Feather Tarot, also on YouTube. And in one of the readings, she said, uh, the cards came out, no peeking. Like, the information was unknown at the moment. So I just remember that sometimes, and that's what I'm hearing right now is no peeking. So I'm going to resist looking and putting that there. We'll wait for the right time in the reading to do that. Let's move on to the Mystic Martian Oracle. We have number four, Andromedans. Autonomy, free will, manifestation. Yes, manifestation with the witch, the magician, using resources, connecting the above to the below. I mentioned with the Caduceus here having um, sacred knowledge and you've 
basically got every kind of sacred knowledge symbol on this card. Not every, but quite a few. And the Andromedans are said to be very high vibrational beings. I think even 12D I read somewhere. Don't quote me on that. So this is reclaiming balance to grow to a higher vibration. With the Queen of Cups there, too, she, she operates on a high vibration at a, in the higher dimensions. Yeah, so the tarot was telling us we're reclaiming our power, autonomy, and free will. Those are two key words for you. Reclaiming autonomy and free will in order to manifest. So overcoming any overwhelming thoughts or situations that other people are creating for you that are overwhelming. Restoring balance so that you can manifest what it is that you want in your life that brings you joy and gives you purpose to celebrate. From the Hidden Worlds Oracle, we have... The Phoenix, resurrection, surrender to change. Yes, resurrection, reclamation, restoring balance, rising from the ashes. So this is, this is speaking to the progression from the Nine of Swords uh, through to the Four of Wands. And this triumphant character in the Five of Wands character, surrender to change. Resurrection. Restoring balance is the change that it's wanting you to surrender to so that your soul is finding its rightful place where it's doing just the right amount. No more, no less. And that was number 29. Reduces to 11. Okay, let's see from the Moonology Oracle. We have surrender to the divine. Full moon. Yeah, that can't be more confirmation to surrender to change, surrender to the divine. The universe is wanting you to not take on so much yourself. Remember that there are resources not only in the earthly realm, but also in the spirit realm that can help you. This is just full moon. This deck usually has like a moon phase with an astrological sign. In this case, it's just full moon. Surrender to the divine. So the full moon is tied to manifestation as well. It's when it said all our hard work is, is said to be coming coming through, um, coming to fruition. Ah, fruition, I, kind of a pun, but look at all that bountiful fruit there. So in order for you to manifest what it is that you want, you need to give the universe and spirit a little bit of space to help you out. Don't take on too much. Don't try and do it all by yourself because spirit wants to help you and the universe wants to help you. It wants you to have free will and autonomy, but it wants you to remember that you have support and resources, just like this Queen of Cups sets boundaries but is a guide. She sets boundaries, but she doesn't turn and leave. You know, she remains as a good, intuitive, psychic, emotional guide for us. From the Magical Dimensions Oracle, we have... Number 12, Emotional Freedom, Vulnerability, Flowing, and Rebalancing. Yes. These oracle cards down here are just confirming the initial messages that were coming through. Look at her rising out of the lake here with all this magic around her. And she's a blue character just like the Andromedan. So vulnerability um, sometimes can speak to that idea, not that you're weak, but that you are able to surrender. Vulnerability is the acknowledgement that you have your own limitations too and you can't do it all on your own sometimes and sometimes you need support. And in this reading, 
um, Spirit is saying, make sure you're remembering we're here to support you. There may be a guide or a mentor that's trying to help you that maybe you've um, not accepted help from because you want this autonomy and free will. But find some balance there so that you're receiving the proper guidance and just the right amount of guidance from that mentor. And the emotional freedom flowing, rebalancing, that's the Six of Cups, um, the Six of Cups energy here. Yeah, so that's going to go right by this emotional freedom, Six of Cups. Flowing, rebalancing, restoring balance to the rightful state, the rightful situation, the rightful mix of giving and receiving. All of these are just confirming everything that we've been saying. So Spirit is coming through with a really clear message here about inner strength. That you are strong. You can be autonomous. You can, you do have free will. And you can manifest. You have the inner strength to do that. To overcome challenges. But don't take on too much so that it becomes a burden. And leads to situations of petty conflict. When we restore balance... Everybody's doing their part. No more, no less. That's a little bit of, man of a mantra coming through here, a mantra coming through here. No more, no less. The right amount. Okay, let's get into these. I know there's two. <laughs> this is the Transcendent Journey Oracle. The first one we have coming through is number 35, Change Your Environment, The Rainbow Serpent. 35 reduces to 8. The Rainbow Serpent is um, said to be in Australia. So we have kind of that region of the world, New Zealand and Australia. The Aboriginal people of Australia consider the Rainbow Serpent, Serpent to be a creator entity. That kind of carved the land. Change your environment. Yeah, so there might be something. This isn't just an internal thing where you're feeling overwhelmed. This is something in your environment that needs changing a little bit to help restore the balance. Whether that's setting boundaries that are a little bit more clear. Yes, we had clearly communicate your needs. So if your environment isn't supporting you in the way that it needs, that you need right now, Spirit is encouraging you to speak up and they're saying that you have the inner strength to do that. We have the blue figure here, blue figure here, and this blue ring around the, the, the moon, which is reminding me of the throat chakra. Speaking, speaking your truth, communicating. Communicate your needs. Throat chakra, if you're wondering, okay, how do I restore balance and, and, and get to the place where I'm doing exactly the right amount, some throat chakra healing exercises may be helpful for you. This is a ritual musical instrument for the Maori. So potentially some music um, singing. Maybe a way to help your throat chakra. Um, singing and music help your throat chakra open up and restore balance. And that can be something as simple as singing along to the radio or singing in the shower. Sing while you're doing chores around the house. Yes, and look at all these nice blues here too. So throat chakra may be a focus area for you to regain your inner strength. Okay, let's get to what we've been waiting for. For filling in that gap there, we have number 37. Truth is unfolding. Enlightenment. 37 reduces to 10. Fulfillment, enlightenment reduces to 1, which is the magician, the witch here. Manifestation, being capable of using the resources that are available to you. 
So this card, we have Reclamation, Reclaiming Your Power, Overcoming Conflict, Staring Right at This Enlightenment. It's almost as it's a goal. And then we have, oh, wow. So the Spirit of Cups in this deck is the King of Cups. This is ultimate achievement. And look at this. We have the serpent coming through here, tying us back to the rainbow serpent. So all of this is helping you. You know, enlightenment is a, a positive, happy, joyful thing to celebrate. So this is all leading us to a higher state of enlightenment. I can't tell if this is the earth or the moon here, but it's very similar to this full moon. Surrender to the divine. Enlightenment. Surrender to change. Uh, spirit may, on this Phoenix card, spirit may be preparing you for going through some kind of change that'll lead, yeah, I mean, the change that we've been prepared for is restoring balance, setting boundaries, getting to our rightful place in the universe where our soul is fulfilling its mission. Enlightenment. Truth is unfolding. I mentioned um, throat chakra with speaking your truth, communicating your needs. This is tying together very nicely. Perfect. The um, guidebook saying in here, this may be a good affirmation for you. Sometimes affirmations are helpful for throat chakra balancing. It says, the rose unfolds petal by petal until the truth is revealed. Use discernment to hold on to what is precious and let the rest fall away. Yes, so if you're needing some kind of thing to remember, the rose unfolds petal by petal, keeping only what is precious and letting the rest fall away. We've heard that throughout this reading. That's beautiful. And there's blue all through that. Um, the rose is red here, and that's reminding me of root chakra. So those things that are at the core, the basic things that help us feel secure and stable. So make sure that those are something you're paying attention to, that you have a solid foundation to work from, restoring balance, only giving and receiving just the right amount, no more, no less. Helps you find a solid foundation and gets you to a point where you're surrendering to change, surrendering to the divine, which is, you know, letting go of some things that may not be serving you anymore. This serpent figure here is in the infinity symbol, which um, I'm not sure if I can see it on this witch card here, but in the traditional tarot, the magician usually has an infinity symbol. So that's tying these cards together. You can manifest the Spirit of Cups energy. I want to see what the guidebook says for that card. Beautiful. It says the a goddess dressed in white is transitioning to the beyond. So that's enlightenment. Look at she's looking at this card and these two are as well. Reclaiming your power to overcome conflict and tra transition to a higher state of being. In this case it's the joy and celebration is higher being. Also very high vibrational because we had the andromedans coming through over here. Free will, uh, autonomy, and manifestation. Okay, so I really wanted to see what the creator of the deck said about this serpent figure here. So listen to this. You have learned to create boundaries and hold your own cup of eternal nourishment. The eel at her feet is shaped in the symbol of an infinity sign, denoting that these lessons come back to us like the ebb and flow of ocean waves. With a heightened understanding of emotional affairs, we are able to embody non-attachment that results in balance, purpose, purpose. Oh, I meant to say perfect, perfect, 
but purpose. Yes, that's the purpose of this reading. The purpose of regaining your in inner strength is to restore balance. That card right there is really speaking, um, what it says in the guidebook is really tying everything in this reading together really well. And the non-attachment means being able to surrender things, surrender to the divine, being a little bit vulnerable, knowing that you can't do it all or you don't have to do it all. Not necessarily that you can't or cannot, but that you don't do not have to do it all. And the key words from the guidebook of the Spirit of Cups are emotional harmony, empathy, balance, and self-love. That's beautiful. I think that's very clear, Pile 4. So rather than continuing to restate things and reemphasize similar messages, let's move on to the last two cards. I'm going to get two more cards for final guidance from Spirit about our inner strength. Um, anything that we may have missed during the reading. And anything for final guidance. The first deck I'm going to take from is this Awake Inner Wisdom cards. One card, Spirit, please. Final guidance. I want to highlight something we may have missed. Not shuffling that great today. Well, right now. Had some good shuffles earlier. Whoa, okay. We've got a couple coming out here. We have the first one is ceremony. A candle, four of wands, celebration. Heal and shine, beautiful. Yes, we talked about restoring balance, some throat chakra healing here with setting appropriate boundaries and making sure you're communicating your needs. So that's going to help you heal and then shine. Reclaiming your power, shining with the enlightenment there. That's beautiful. Some crystals here. Um, so, th yeah, this candle is this candle is tying me to the wands with ceremony and four of wands, and then we had this being a ritual musical instrument. So, some kind of ritual for you may be helpful. Rituals are anything that you're doing as a, a habit, but also because we have the witch here, there might be some kind of witchcraft, um, magical rituals that you can look into. I'm not well versed enough in that to give you recommendations right now, but it might be something for you to explore. And then this heel and shine is tying me back to this Kunzai card especially because it was reversed. So let me get some more from the guidebook on that. Using resources that are available to us. Can't do it all on our own. Okay, this says, Kunzite activates in us a deep appreciation for life, reminding us that the universe is a benevolent and loving force that seeks the best for us if we allow it. Yes, surrender to the divine. Universe and spirit want to help you out right now. So in terms of, we talked about rituals. So kunzai, I think, is the crystal definitely being highlighted for you. Other things that may be helpful, scents, um, sometimes getting a candle of these scents is, is helpful. Oh, wow, we have the rose. Yeah, there you go. Get a rose-scented candle. That'll remind you how the, the rose unfolds. 
petal by petal, keeping what is precious and letting the rest fall, fall away. The other ones are frankincense, frankincense, lab, danum, jasmine, and then rose. Those might be some things that are helpful for you to work with or just have around your house. Light a rose scented candle or something that gives you that feeling. Um, some people are sensitive to certain smells. So if you can't have that rose scented candle, something that evokes that imagery, that feeling in you, that you're holding on to what's precious and letting the rest fall away. Crystals are good if you're sensitive to smells. Okay, final card we're going to get is the Wild Mystic Oracle to fill in this gap here. One final card, Spirit, please, to tie this all together. Anything that we may have missed. Whoa, that is way too many. <laughs> the ones on top um, that fell over are the turtle with peace and deal with um, Capricorn on there. That's the devil card reclamation there kind of destroyed the layout here. Can you still see everything? Good enough, huh? So, anyway, take from that what you will, just knowing that those fell out like that. Let me give them a good shuffle here. There we go. Let's see what we have. Sacred. Starfish. This actually came out in another reading, so there might be another reading that is relevant to you. In that other reading, it was very clear that this card was highlighting um, traditions and sacred knowledge and, and actually sacred rituals. So that might be doing the same thing for you. What do you consider sacred? Yeah, the, the rose is telling you um, hold on to what's precious and let the rest fall away. So uh, exercise for you may be asking the question, what, two questions. What does the word sacred mean to me and what do I consider sacred? Enlightenment, emotional freedom, autonomy and free will. Those are pretty sacred states of being. And remember, we had this um, change your environment. So take another look at what's around you that may be blocking you from creating boundaries or moving forward in this direction towards enlightenment, balance, and harmony. I actually will see what this sacred card says in the guidebook. Yeah, okay, so one of the main things this card is saying is this card tells you to look for the sacred in the mundane and the supernatural in the natural. When this card comes into a reading, it's a reminder that we are all unified, similar, and akin to one another. It is a symbol of our connection to each other as well as to the divine. Whatever the divine might mean to you, define sacred. This card signifies our links and bonds with one another through through not only our similarities, but also our differences. Um, this five of wands petty conflict, a lot is caused by people having differences and not being able to see that those differences are a result of people being on their own journey and not accepting other people that are different, that people may have a different way of doing things. So if... If you're facing something like that, communicating your needs and changing your environment, setting boundaries to make sure that if you are a little bit different in the way that you want to do things or goals and dreams that you may have, you're communicating that so that it gets to a place of harmony and people accept it. That may be 
something to work on is how to more clearly communicate what something means to you so that people around you understand and there isn't conflict. Frankincense is mentioned here again as a scent to work with, and that was mentioned uh, with the kunzite. So I mentioned that it may be encouraging you to do some rituals, some witchcraft or magic rituals. Here is recommendations for spell work. Communication with divine energy, meditating on the self. It also says invocation work and angel magic. But what I'm focused on here is meditating on the self. What is it that is sacred to you? What is it that is important to you? Learn how to clearly communicate that to other people so that you're living in a better, more better state of balance and harmony that leads to abundance for everybody. That's beautiful, Pile 4. I'm going to leave your reading here. I hope that it's been helpful for you. I've certainly enjoyed it. Thank you for spending time with me, and I hope to see you again in a future reading. Welcome to the collective extended section of the reading on inner strength, asking spirit for messages about our inner strength, how to em embrace it, tap into it, what exactly is it. The purpose of this section is to give spirit a chance to give us a collective theme uh, for about inner strength that is relevant to anybody coming to this video, no matter which pile you chose. So I have the crystals from each pile there on top, and we're going to start with this alchemy tool to get some messages from the four elements, and then we'll move into tarot and some additional oracle cards that give us themes and archetypes and things like that. I'm going to roll these dice, and we have four for the number, or for the fire element, which is the cauldron. We have two for the earth element, it says sandstorm. We have four for the water element. Waves. Excuse me. Ooh. Waves. And then number 12 there for the air element. That really, that water one really wants to keep turning over to a 10, doesn't it? Keep that in mind. For the air element, we have angel. Let's see what the 10 is for the water element. Bubbles. So we have waves and bubbles for the water element. Let's... Let's read the 10 first as the kind of back of, de of the deck energy, and then I'll move that back to the 4 since it is the number that came out first. So bubbles, rising from the depths of the sea or the bottom of a champagne glass raised in celebration, you will encounter the bubbles that show life's infinite passions go on unchecked. Their enthusiasm is endless as their spiral dance tests the limit of their ability to climb towards the heavens. Ardent feelings can give us the energy to rise above our limits, whether real or imagined. But too many bubbles may blind us to the point where our lust for excitement renders us unable to discern what deserves our zeal. I definitely see why this number 10 kept flipping over because of the mention of feelings giving us energy to rise above our limits. That's really uh, something I heard a little bit of in each reading that I did up until this point. 
I think that's really relevant also that it mentioned that too many bubbles can can blind us. So it's speaking about balance. So finding just the right of, amount of energy and that to rise up and reach a state of balance and harmony is what that bubble is telling us about. Balancing our energy so that we're in a harmonious state. And then the four for the water element is waves. Like the ocean waves with their never-ending moon-born cycle of crests and troughs, we will be tossed about by the emotional events of this world where the only constants are duality and change. Yes, we had many messages throughout the different piles about change. The cycles we find ourselves passing through offer us the full range of perspectives to savor between the high and low points of our experience. We cannot expect, nor should we seek, a time in our life where we are not subject to the, these often rapid ups and downs. For movement is the sign of our life's unique process. Movement is a sign of progress and process. Highs and lows. And with that being tied to the bubbles card, we're seeking some way to balance that and make sure that we understand that, yeah, there are ups and downs in life. And if we get ourselves to a harmonious, balanced state, then we are better able to get through those. And that speaks a lot to our inner strength as well, to be able to deal with that without it tossing us about, so to speak, in the waves when they get a little rambunctious. For the air element, number 12, the angel coming through, says, be aware that behind you stands an angel patiently waiting for you to surrender your prideful desire to resist contributions from sources outside of yourself. Ah, okay, so we did have surrender in some of the piles. And this is spirit reminding you that they're there to help. So you don't have to do it all on your own. Your alchemy process can include the gift of grace from the highest sources if you have faith that receiving aid that is beyond your control does not imply your failure. Yes, accepting help is not a sign of weakness. I remember a moment with my niece where she said, strong women don't ask for help. And I said, actually, strong women know when to ask for help. And she was like, oh, yeah, okay. She thought about that. And I was happy that she took a moment to remember that people are there to help her help her. You know, she's a kid and she's trying to grow up and do things on her own. And I just wanted her to remember that, that we're there to support her. And just that one little saying of strong women know when to ask for help was a big change for her. And now she actually comes to me sometimes and she said, this is a time when I need help. So I, I really am proud of that moment that Spirit guided me to say that to her and that she remembered that, and I'm thankful for that. This card continues, Faith requires great ba bravery, for it requires you to let go of your beliefs, open your mind to the truth, whatever it may be, and not fear the unknown. Yes, Spirit is there to help help you. I don't think we need to let go of all of our beliefs, but we do need to have an open mind to anything new coming in. Throughout the reading, Spirit reminded us that we did have great inner strength, but we didn't have to do it on our own. So that's coming through with this angel card. Then number four, we have with, for the fire element, we have the cauldron. Act as an old cauldron whose familiar shape both contains and cooks. Together, the many ingredients that make delicious nourishments and other useful concoctions. Using a trusted recipe that has stood the test of time, mix together the various component parts of your intended creation. Keep your hearth fire nurtured in a very steady and dependable manner. As you gently stir your thickening broth, remember to season it properly so that all whom you plan on sharing it with will find it to their liking. On a more literal level, 
this may just be talking about making sure that you're nourishing yourself with healthy foods and taking care of your body, honoring your body. The body is usually thought of as like an earthly material, but in this case, the, the fire element is coming through, talking about cooking up proper ingredients to be nurturing for yourself and those that you're sharing it with. And I'm also drawn here to using a trusted recipe that has stood the test of time. That reminds me of one of the earlier readings where it mentioned that there are traditions and customs and rituals that are proven to be helpful, and we need to remember those and not just throw them out because they may be associated with the old regime there. So this is remembering the positive things with old traditions and customs that we can carry forward into our lives to continue to help us. You know, we do need to be prepared for the new, but we also need to remember that those that have come before us have done a lot of work that we can draw on, and we don't have to start over completely. There will be something that we can look back on and learn from and carry forward with us that will be helpful. From the earth element, number two coming through, we have sandstorm. You will encounter the blinding confusion of the wind-whipped sandstorm. You will be challenged to go on with your process without a clear image of where you stand now, where you are going, or even where you have come from. To move in any direction, take small steps while keeping your hands outstretched so that you may touch what, uh, what you encounter to make sure that it is as you think it is. Only if you can actually grasp what is before you will the sandstorm fail to deceive. So I don't think this is a, a, a warning from spirit, so to speak, that um, your, your life is leading towards blinding confusion. But I think this is saying when we do face challenges that small taking small steps to keep moving forward and then checking to make sure that that is the leading us in the right direction before taking the next step. So this is encouraging us, especially when we face challenges, take a pragmatic approach step by step. There was one reading that said that every journey starts with one step. So that is what I'm being drawn to from this card. And then it's saying, you know, reach out and touch what you see in front of you so that you're not being deceived. That's take the step, pause and reflect so that you can make sure that whatever that step has led you to is leading you in the right direction and will keep you moving forward in a positive manner. We're going to get move into some tarot. I'm going to be using this transparent tarot deck just to get um, a collective picture. And when I use this extended set of resources, I usually would take the 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 tarot card that came out in the reading from this and then layer them. But in this case, I'm just going to shuffle and let Spirit give us four tarot cards to stack and layer so that we can see a collective message. So four tarot cards, Spirit, the collective message for those coming to the inner strength. And the first card we have coming out is number 11. And this is either strength or justice, depending on which deck you are using. So that's very appropriate for inner strength message. Okay, Spirit, three more cards. Thank you. Whoa. Okay, it's going to go this way. We have number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. Yes, the cycles of life. Where was it? Um, the cycles we find ourselves passing through offer us the full range of perspectives to savor between the high and low points of our experience. Just 
two more, please. Wheel of Fortune also speaks to good things coming towards us. We have the Four of Pentacles. Is that? Oh, okay. I couldn't see the fourth, but this uh, figure is hugging the fourth pentacle to their chest. One on the head, two below the feet, one hugged to the chest, and one, yeah, one above the head, like I said. And the five of wands. Okay, so four of pentacles is embracing what you have, holding on tightly sometimes and being too stubborn. And five of wands is talking about sometimes conflict. We did have, um, yeah, I think we had... Each of these minor arcana come out in previous readings. We had four pentacles in one reading and five of wands in one reading. So if we look at this message, these cards stacked together, the center of the Wheel of Fortune is right on the eye of that almost looks like a leopard or a cougar. First, two things from that. It's first telling me Third eye is important, but also keep your eye on the target. Keep your eye on the goal. We had the Wheel of Fortune tying us to the cycles of life, the ups and downs, so that may be another way to help you deal with challenges is keep your eye on the goal. What is the end state that you're seeking? And the Four of Pentacles figure is resting on the wrist of the hand that's reaching out to to touch the strength card there. And the four of pentacles figure rests right on that. So that I think is speaking about the balance of giving and receiving and being open to outside resources like this angel card told us that spirit is there to help us so let's make sure that we're remaining open to things outside of us yes we are strong and we have great inner strength the way the character is holding this pentacle and has two under its feet we have a strong foundation we have a strong inner core and then this fourth pinnacle up here is spirit coming in and offering us what it is that we need. And with this five of wands figure here, I'm, I'm not really getting conflict from the way that this is fitting in here with the, the rest of the cards. It's almost like this figure is front and center saying, I'm here. Here I am. I'm ready. Raising their hand. I'm ready. I'm ready. So that may be spirit reminding us uh, one thing about inner strength is being present. Sometimes just showing up is the step we need to take in order to start moving forward on some kind of journey or kickstart a process. And then... When you're ready, raising your hand to contribute what it is that you have to contribute. That's really beautiful. Okay, we're going to leave those there. I'm going to draw some help now from astrology. We're using these karma cards. They have a house, a sign, and a planet card. So I'm going to shuffle in until I get one of each. Whoops, that didn't work. There we go. So a house, a sign, and a planet for some advice from the astrological realm. Please. The planet, the planet's coming out first. We have Venus. I'm, I'm torn to good times. Wait, did I say I'm torn to? Interesting. I was thinking drawn to. I think I said torn to. If not, hmm. Yeah, where was that um, 
we had that message about duality in one of these alchemy cards here. Wow, I am really not seeing where the word duality came in earlier, but because we have these two faces and I said torn to good times, um, let's keep the word duality in mind as we move forward here. Venus is that love, nurture, yes. So we were talking about finding proper balance for making sure that we're nurtured in it in the way that we need to be. A sign in a house, please. Okay, we've got the sign coming through is Scorpio. Resulting from the power of, yes, inner strength. Okay. Scorpio speaks about going into the depths. Whoa. Okay. Um, what's going on here, guys? You want to be with Venus? Okay, we had that message about duality before. And this planet card really, really jumped out. So let's see what wants to go with Venus. It's almost like a... It's either going to be in opposition because I had that kind of misspeaking about torn. Um, or it's going to be like conjunct to it. We have Neptune. Be prepared to sacrifice for. Inspire others with. Yielding is the only way to... If you've not seen these cards before, they have different phrases and you're supposed to kind of line them up to get one. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes not. So we have Neptune and Venus coming through together here. So if I line these up, good times, yielding is the only way to, yielding is the only way to good times. So that reminds me of the message we've had throughout the previous readings and we had it here uh, with this angel card about surrendering to spirit surrendering to is this um to accepting help recognizing when we can't do it all our own looking for the house sign to complete this astrology advice please Also on that spirit, um, sorry, the Scorpio card, we have purification to resurrect. There was one reading that had a card that came out and purification was the, the key word on, uh, on the card. So purifying to resurrect. Yeah, that, there was a reading that talked about holding on to what is precious and letting the rest fall away, which is speaking a lot here to these three cards coming through. And I think it was in that reading that it was leading to a higher state of vibration and way of being and towards enlightenment. This sign card also popped out. I'm having a little issue getting a house card to come out, but because we had that duality keyword... I'm going to take it. We have Leo. Self-confidence to create. Taking a chance on. Yes. Self-confidence to create. That's very appropriate for this inner strength reading here. One of the readings talked about... Okay, here's a house. Two house cards came out on top there, so that's good. We're going to take those. One of the readings talked about getting back to our creative side to help us remember our inner strength, and that's coming out with this Leo card here as well. And the two cards from the houses are the ninth house, long-range thinking or travel, and spiritual values. A lot of talk about journey and enlightenment coming through. Remembering that 
what we're going through is leading us to a, a, a higher state of being and a positive thing. Some happy little hot air balloons on that ninth house card. And then we have the second house, resources, and what you value. Yes, okay, your beliefs, your beliefs, what you value, and your resources. This is really good coming through eighth house. Um, so second house kind of talks about your resources. And um, why did I say eighth house? Oh, because Scorpio rules the eighth house. Um, that's other people's resources. So this is finding the balance between using resources that you have within and resources that you can draw on from your support network. This is finding that balance there. This is really saying um, something very similar over and over again, and that's really appropriate for a collective message from Spirit, letting us know that we're not alone. That we can draw on our own inner strength, but we don't have to do it on our own. We have spirit helping us, and we have other people within our support network helping us. So let's balance that and have the self-confidence to take a chance on a journey. And then long-range thinking ties back to how this center of the wheel of fortune is right on the eye there, keeping your eye on the target, long-range vision. One of the readings came out earlier was creating a vision board to help you figure out the steps and what it is that matter to you, what you value. Vision board may be helpful for more of you if that didn't come out in the pile that you were drawn to. All right, I'm going to take for this um, section, I'm going to be using, for this section here, I'm going to be using the spread machine cards. I have the original spread machine and the uh, quest and change extension packs for that. And what this these cards do is help highlight what it is in our reading that it's talking about. So you can use these cards to create your own spread, but I like to to use it to help focus a reading, and I like to use it in this extended version to make sure that I haven't missed anything, but also to kind of add a theme, primarily to the tarot. Okay, so we have accept... To acknowledge, to recognize, to register as true, to validate, to affirm, to own. And the theme here is processing. Yes, accept. Accept and surrender. Accept what is. That's not saying settle for something that is not meeting your needs. That's saying recognize, because the word recognize is in there, recognize when to accept the way things are and recognize when not to accept something. So one of the previous readings talked about sometimes acknowledging that change is good grief. Come on. Thank you. Sometimes acknowledging that change is required is the first step that we need to take. Okay, we're going to get one card from this quest extension pack of the spread machine. No, I'm not taking three. There. We've got mission log. Your priorities, focus areas, and to-do list. What is relevant to your story right now? What must be done? What have you forgotten to do? How can you organize your task better? And the um, key word there is equipment. So that's t resources. Yes. Okay. So we talked about a, um, a, a vision board as, as a tool that may be helpful for you. This is... Um, this is reminding me of, of journaling, 
So I'm going to put this here. So you can see these questions. I'm going to read them again because I think if you're looking for next steps and how to tap into your inner strength, write these questions down and then journal about them. Your priorities, your focus areas, your to-do list. What is relevant to your story right now? What must be done? What must be done? Yeah, that is talking about the non-negotiables, right? Like, I this I need to do and able to feel secure and stable. This other thing is a nice to have and maybe it can be done in the future. But right now, what must be done? What have you forgotten to do? How can you organize your tasks better? That's really helpful. I appreciate that. For, this is the change extension pack from the spread machine. We're going to get one more card. Okay, we've got initiate, to start, to begin the process, to be a pioneer, to spark change. And the theme for this is call to action. Yeah, that's beautiful. Initiate, begin the process, take one step to start the journey. It doesn't have to be a gigantic leap. It's pragmatic. It's not the full energy coming through here. It's not taking that leap. We, uh, not taking that leap of faith so much, but having faith. This angel card here really wanted us to remember to have faith in the universe. Talking about pragmatic steps to begin a journey, begin a process, step by step, small steps while keeping your hands out stretched. So yeah, small steps and then a check-in. Take a small step and then check in to see how that's making you feel, what it's making you think about, what kind of outcomes is it leading to, and make sure it's on your the journey you want to be in the direction you want to be. And then the benefit of taking small steps versus a giant leap is it's easier to course correct if needed. Maybe you take a step and it leads to something that you're not exactly pleased with. So it's easier to course correct if that was only a small step instead of a giant leap that you took. I had reserved this space here for the blind spot oracle to get a card helping us identify what blind spots we may be not seeing. Uh, this is a... So I think I might have to reorganize my order here, but we'll, oh shoot, I just, I just, look, I just mixed them the wrong, yep, all right, well, there we go, gonna have to be that way, we'll sort that out later. So Spirit, can we have one blind spot? Yes, we can. Wow, that just blew out. It's been waiting to come forward. All right, let's see what we have. We have number 22, and it came out in reverse. The first thing I'm seeing here is the triple goddess signal there um, about kind of the maiden, the mother, and the crone. Different phases of life, different steps in a process. Yeah, this is you down here with you having a version of the maiden, the mother, and the crone within you to draw on. And then this is spirit forming an umbrella over you, a shield of protection. This top half of this card 
looks to me like a motorized hang glider. I'm not sure if that's relevant to anyone, but that's the first thing I saw with that. I will say that the number 22 did come through as a number in one of the readings, and that's the master builder number, if I remember correctly. So that's reminding us that we have the skills and the capabilities to build our future the way we want it to be built. So that's tying me back to this Leo card here. Self-confidence to create and taking a chance. You are a master builder. You have that within you. I don't think Spirit is telling us in this collective message that, you know, that our life path is we're all master builders. But I think what that's reminding us is we all have a master builder talent within that we can draw on and that we're protected and guided as we go through. So uh, I drew this uh, to be a blind spot. Um, so if we're thinking of that in something we may not be seeing, something we may have forgotten that was here, what have you forgotten? Um, if this is a blind spot to us, yeah, I think it's this hang glide coming in, hang glider coming in is the blind spot that we sometimes forget about that spirit's there for us. So our blind spot may be when we get so focused on just what can I do? What can I do? What can I do to help myself? Of course, we always need to do that, but we don't need to go it alone. That's coming through very strongly throughout here. Let's see what the creator of this deck says about the number 22 card uh, from the blind spot oracle, just because I want to make sure that if there is a blind spot that we're not seeing. I mean, I'm taking from it what I just took, but I want to see what the creator keyword is. Endurism. Okay, so it says, if you have drawn this sigil, sigil, sorry, Right now, you are enduring something you should not be enduring. You are probably telling yourself that it is good enough. All right, yes. Yeah, so when when this accept card came out, I I kind of corrected myself where I said it's more about knowing when to accept and when to not accept. And this card right here is telling us that you may be carrying a burden that you... You don't need to carry and you might not be seeing that because you're just focused on getting through getting by settling so that's a blind spot for you to look out for there was another reading that talked about carrying too many burdens and and restoring balance to yourself so that's coming through here with these two cards the in endurism and accept all right, let's find out from Spirit, from the Synchronicity Oracle, something synchronistic or a sign or a symbol usually is what I'm looking for when I use this deck as something to help us see that thing that is that's tying everything. What's that? Tying everything. To, oh, that's the instruction card for spreads. Let's ask Spirit for some kind of sign or synchronicity that we can be paying attention to. Two of them. Duality is really here coming through. So in this case... I'm really, the duality is coming through. It's you and spirit working together, co-creating. Oh my gosh, that's the word. No wonder why they keep throwing two cards at me. It's been like co-create throughout this whole thing. Yes, remember that you're co-creating with the universe. So we have the love card and shooting stars is a key word here. And then we have... This card came out in Reverse Princess. And it came out in Reverse next to Love. Where can I set this so that you can see it? 
Can you see it there? So there was one reading that had a pretty powerful spirit animal guide as a horse for drawing on inner strength. So that's coming through. These stars are all through these figures. Well, it's in their hair, but that's also speaking back to help from the cosmos, thinking big picture. So the creator for the Synchronicity Oracle says, Princess says she walks in beauty and is shining light to others. She, she treats all living things with kindness and love. Shining light to others. That came out in one of the earlier readings about being a beacon of light for helping heal the world. And that's coming through here. Um, the reason it's reversed is I think that you may not be recognizing yourself, recognizing within yourself the light that you can bring to the world. I, and that is a pretty collective message from spirit right now is recognizing how you have skills and abilities that can improve the world. Start with yourself, I think. Get yourself to a point where you're recognizing how that light within can help yourself. But don't forget that there's a bigger picture at play here and that when we love ourselves, we attract more love into our lives and then we can spread love. I think that's what this is talking about here. The timing of this reading is near the time of Imbolc. I'm not too well versed on pagan and pagan type rituals and the, the seasons of the witch kind of knowledge base, but I'm drawn to the red hair and the horse on this figure, on this lady here, the princess here. And the timing of this reading is around the time of Embalk, which is marking the midwinter point between the winter solstice and, and the spring. So this red hair on the princess here is reminding me of Brigid. Brigid. So I went and found, it reminded me of this card here from the Divine Feminine Oracle. The goddess of the eternal flame. I am eternal flame. And each day my light grows brighter. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes, that's definitely inspired there. We're going to put her front and center here. Um, yep. This Because this is reversed, the, definitely uh, this talked about the light within bringing light to the world, and Brigid is definitely, Brigid is definitely coming through here for us as a spirit guide. And because the timing is near in bulk, um, it's definitely relevant here. I am, an, I am an eternal flame, and each day my light grows brighter. And this was reversed, so I think Spirit is telling us sometimes we forget that. And Brigid is coming through to remind us of that. So, since I'm not so familiar with the time of Embolk, the, um, the guidebook actually has some really good information here. So, I'm going to leave it here. I'm not going to read every word, but for this, I'm just going to read some highlights. She represents the essence of an inner dawn and the healing that comes from knowing that the best is yet to come. She is celebrated in a Celtic festival called Embalk that, place, that takes place halfway between winter and spring solstices. It is said that at the moment between dusk and daybreak, Brigid arose into the sky with flames like rays and sun blazing in her hair. Associated with poetry and with all things elevated, states of being, high-rising flames, lofty dimensions, elevated wisdoms. Yes, that came through in several reasons that readings that were being prepared for a higher state of being. Before I turn the page, if you want to pause and read. 
When your soul selects her card, that's the moment when you're making your way through the dark and suddenly, after what feels like days or months or even years, a ray of light comes through to you. A lightning happens. A lightning happens. Each step isn't quite as hard to make as the one before and you feel great. And you feel a great shift begin as if now you're headed towards something new, something even brighter. Brigid is the essence of the first flame, that first ray of light, and reminds us that the darkness never lasts. Yes, beautiful. She's coming through as a really good spirit guide for us here. The soul voice meditation, it's a question. What allows me to feel light more often every day? That could be another question to add to your journal entries there. One of the readings earlier said that some throat chakra healing was required and to be able to clearly communicate your needs. So that might be another way for you to work on that. And the intention set here is, I am an eternal flame, and each day my light grows brighter. Yes, that's the the saying on the card there. So that's beautiful. So she's definitely coming through this time of year as a great spirit guide for, for you, guiding this collective message about inner strength. Okay, since we had so many extra cards here, I'm going to move this out of the way here. I have a color goddess oracle that I want to get a card from because it helps us focus on colors and chakras and in your reading if there was a color that was prominent or that maybe this would reinforce that or if there was a color that in your reading you didn't pay attention to this would maybe help with that not exactly sure how this is going to come through for the collective reading because, like I said, normally this was intended to be the extended version of each pile. But so much information came through, I wanted to turn it into a collective message. So let's see what we get from the Color Goddess Oracle. This one? Yep. Ivory, charm, finesse, and poise. Okay, I think I'll move the princess down here. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that looks okay. So, charm, finesse, and poise. Ivory. This is tying into kind of the princess idea. She's got a, a crown of pearls there. You know, if you think of a classic princess, especially because this is a Celtic ritual, um, and you have the royalty, and I know the royalty is from England, but it's bringing through Princess Diana. Um, set all those politics aside, but... Like, this is evoking, you know, that classic royalty feeling of how a person of royalty and a princess is supposed to act, but also how they do act, which we respect. You know, would they act with charm, with finesse, and with poise? Women that are well put together and just show composure, finesse, and poise are inspiring to me because I am not like that on many occasions. So it's inspiring to me to see somebody who can be that well put together. I don't want to be that because it's just not my personality. So if it's not your personality, don't feel like I'm trying to force that on you. But it's it's something to inspire because it it speaks of grace and serenity so the creator in the guidebook says your charm will benefit you at this time think twice before you speak or act 
She asks that you remember your manners no matter what is happening around you. Keep your cool. What you do and how you behave leaves a strong impression. The flowers on this card are angels' trumpets, symbolic of her kindness, goodness, and poise. So that ties us back to the angel here, reminding us that that spirit is there to help us. Faith requires great bravery, for it requires you to let go of your beliefs, open your mind to the truth, whatever it may be, and not fear the unknown. Also, this said, think twice before you speak and act. That's taking us back to the pragmatic nature of your journey, where it's step by step. Take a step, do a check-in. Take a step, do a check-in. So that's reminding us of that, and try to do so with poise and finesse and and kindness okay i have two more cards one is from the divine door kind of mini oracle whoa that one flew right out are we taking it no okay we are distant dream Okay, so this is what it looks like. And it says, Distant Dream. The distance calls your heart to roam free. As you dare dream it, so must it be. Tying us back to the ninth, here, ninth house here, long-range traveling, Neptune with dreams and visions. As you dare dream it, so must it be. The distance calls your heart to roam free. Yes, beautiful. Something higher is waiting for you. Uh, you're being prepared or led on a journey of enlightenment. Bringing you there. Okay, here's the other card that came through. Um, bringing you to a higher state of vibration, a higher state of love, kindness, and bringing your light to the world. The other card that came through is this Buddha figure through the doorway. Offerings. Abundance lies in the heart that allows. Share more than expected and see love come round. Yes, so abundance lies in the heart that allows. Ties me back to this accept card. Share more than is expected and see love come around. So we talked about making sure to find a balance about what we're sharing with others, and I think that's still very important. Share more than expected and see love come around. So I don't think that means give more than you can. You still need to recognize what it is that you can give without putting yourself in unnecessary state of sacrifice. This is saying... Share more than expected and see love come round. Abundance lies in the heart that allows. So the abundance lies in a heart in the heart that allows talked about the surrender and yielding recognizing spirits there to help and that there are maybe other resources available to you that you hadn't considered before. And then the share more than expected and see love come round. That's where you put more love out into the world and, and love comes back to you. So share more than is expected may just be something simple as saying hi to someone on the street, saying thank you, saying please remember your manners. Yeah, so a lot of times um, I am surprised by... The response I get when I just say please and thank you, and this is really when I'm out like in stores or restaurants like with with retail and service, people working in those industries. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of times people don't treat them with all kindness and respect and politely and I'm sometimes surprised at when I say please and thank you the response that I get how they're they're happy that I said that or they're surprised that I said that and to me that's something that unfortunately may be unexpected in this this um 
world here is for certain people to be treated with respect and politeness. So this is encouraging us to remember that we're all in this together and we should treat each other with kindness and respect and remember each person is on their journey no matter where they are. All right, I'm going to take one more card from this affirmation deck. It has a question and an affirmation, a question on one side and an affirmation on the other. So this will be our final card for this collective reading about inner strength. And hopefully it gives you a nice affirmation to use moving forward and potentially a question for your journal. And your both. Thank you. So this says... Today, I invite calm and peace into my life. These rainbow colors almost look like a big heart, but that's also every chakra color coming through. And the question says, how do I feel when I am calm and at peace? How can I invoke this feeling during times of stress? How do I feel when I am calm and at peace? How can I invoke this feeling during times of stress? Today, I invite calm and peace into my life. We're going to put that right here by Brigitte. Remember, she's a strong spirit guide that came through for us. And this saying said, how can I, how do I feel when I'm calm and at peace? And how can I invite that into my life when I'm feeling stressed basically and that's you know this five of wands here is conflict and stress and controversy sometimes and remember this feeling from this figure in the beginning wasn't that it was a state of conflict like this is a capable person that has shown up and is raising their hand to participate so I think that's tying us back to when we get into situations that could stress us out and be challenging and be full of conflict, one thing we can do is to bring peace and calm into ourselves and try to make our response a poised, graceful response from a place of love and kindness. I think that's tying this all together very well. And one final message coming through. The blue on here is the throat chakra color and the red and yellows on here are root, sacral, and solar plexus chakra. So this is reminding us to make sure that our, our foundations are solid and do what we need in order to feel stable and secure with the basic things in life, and then have the confidence to move forward and co-create with the universe and speak out about our needs and speak love and light into the universe with the, the throat chakra here. Communicate kindness, communicate love, communicate good manners. So the this is definitely focusing us on the root chakra and the throat chakra for inner strength. Hopefully this collective message has been helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments if this version of this extended is helpful. If you like this, it does tend to go long. So that's why I moved it for, I stopped doing it from after each pile. I like this. Actually, it helps me tie together what was said in all four piles. And then I think also gave Spirit a great chance. Like Brigid didn't come through in the initial four readings, but she came through very strongly here. So I think I like doing this. I hope that you did. I think I'll continue this method. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I hope to see you again in the future.